in these problems, we're going to be using the idea of the conservation of charge. Because charge is conserved, that means it's not created or destroyed, it's always coming from somewhere. The total charge at the beginning must always be equal to the total charge at the end. So in this situation here, we have a charged particle shown here, which decays into three smaller particles as shown. So all that that means is our charged particle splits up into three other smaller particles. The question also tells us the total charge after is negative four E. Remember E, that's the unit for elementary charge, which is the charge on a proton or an electron. We need to find the net charge on the unknown particle and the total charge before. The first useful piece of information we've been given is that the total charge after is negative 4E. So we can use our conservation of charge equation. Since we know the total charge at the beginning is equal to the total charge at the end, we can use that equation. We know that the total charge afterwards is negative 4E. So we can put that in on the right-hand side of our equation. And then since the total charge at the end and the beginning are the same, we know the total charge at the beginning is also going to be negative 4E. So that can answer our first question here. What was the total charge before? Negative 4E. Make sure you type in that negative number. Now we need to figure out our missing charges in the question. So before we just had this one particle and we know the total charge was negative 4E. So since there's just one particle, we know that must have a charge of negative 4E. Afterwards, however, we have three different particles. So we add up the charges of all three of these, we'll be left with the total charge after. So let's add those up. We had negative 2E plus something that we don't know, I'm gonna call it X for now, plus the charge of the third particle, which was positive 4E. And those will all add up to give us our total charge of negative 4E. So now we can just rearrange our equation to get X on its own. So I'm going to add 2E to both sides to get rid of the subtracted 2E. So I'll do that first. That'll give me negative 2E is equal to X plus 4E. And then lastly, I'm going to subtract 4e from both sides to get x on its own. So that will end up with negative 6e is equal to x. So that's telling me here my charge on this particle is negative 6e. We can just check this now. We know these three should all add up to give us negative 4e. So if we do negative 2 plus negative 6, that gets us negative 8. Plus 4, that gets us negative 4, which is the total that we should be getting. In this question, we have charging by friction occurring as a PVC pipe is rubbed on a piece of wool. We can see at the beginning, both are neutral. They both are labeled with a charge of zero coulombs. Our total charge at the beginning therefore is zero plus zero, which is zero coulombs total. So we can just make a note of that here. And we can add that answer here. What was the total charge on both objects before? Zero and our unit is coulombs. Then the objects get rubbed together and charged particles will transfer between the objects and we end up with these charges at the end. Now, based on the idea of the conservation of charge, which tells us the total charge at the beginning is going to be equal to the total charge at the end, we know our charge before and after will be the same. So since we had zero coulombs at the beginning, we must also have zero coulombs at the end. So now looking at what happened, we end up with positive 9.44 coulombs on the wool. Therefore, the rod must have the same charge but negative in order for them to add up to give us zero still, since our total at the end 
also needs to be equal to zero coulombs. So our after charge on the rod is going to be negative 9.44. Again, make sure you include that negative sign. That's important here. Okay, great. So we figured out our charges on our different objects. Now to describe what happened. What was the net transfer of charged particles? Well, we know that protons cannot move. They're stuck securely in the nucleus. However, electrons can move. And since the rod has become more negatively charged, it must have gained electrons. So electrons have moved from the wool onto the PVC pipe. So be really clear, electrons have moved from the wool to the PVC pipe. And that's why the wool ends up positively charged in the end, because it's lost electrons. It has more protons comparatively at the end, and therefore it's positively charged. What magnitude of net charge was transferred from one object to the other? Well, whatever charge was transferred is shown here by the final charges. Since they both had zero to start with, the wool gained 9.44 coulombs, the rod lost 9.44 coulombs. So the amount transferred was 9.44 coulombs. Here it just asks for the magnitude. So we don't need to include any positive or negative signs. Lastly, which material has a higher electron affinity? Electron affinity is the idea of a material that likes electrons and wants to gain them. Here, the electrons moved from the wool to the PVC pipe. Therefore, we know that PVC must have a higher electron affinity. If wool had a higher electron affinity, the electrons would have gone from the rod to the wool instead, and we would have ended up with a negative charge on the wool and a positive charge on the rod. In this problem, we have two identical conducting spheres with initial charges. One of them we know, we know the right-hand sphere had a charge of negative 4.96. We don't know the initial charge on the left-hand sphere. Those spheres are then momentarily touched together as shown in the during diagram and then are separated again. And at the end, we can see that the left-hand sphere has a charge of positive 9.28. The right-hand sphere has an unknown charge, which we're going to need to find. Okay, so the first thing we can know in this situation is that since our conducting spheres are identical, and we know that the charge gets shared out among the spheres when they touch, we know that both spheres at the end must have the same charge as each other. So since we had positive 9.28 coulombs on the left-hand sphere, we know we must also have positive 9.28 coulombs on the right-hand sphere. That's because the charge from before, once they touch together, it gets shared out equally between them. So now we can answer the question of the total charge on both objects after, since we know they both have a charge of positive 9.28. So the total after is gonna be found just by adding those together. So it's positive 9.28 plus positive 9.28, which is going to give us a total charge after of 18.6 coulombs. So I can add that in this box here. And then we have another rule we can use which is the conservation of charge. The total charge before is equal to the total charge after. So since we end up with positive 18.6 coulombs, we know that the total charge before is also going to be positive 18.6 coulombs. Now we can use that to think about what happened before. We now know the total charge is 18.6 coulombs. Therefore, if we add up the charges of our two spheres, 
we should end up with 18.6. So I'm gonna call this charge of the less sphere X for now, plus negative 4.96. So we end up with negative 4.96 there. So I wanna know what subtract 4.96 gives us 18.6. To do that, I can just add 4.96 to both sides of my equation to end up with X equals 18.6 plus 4.96, which is going to leave me with X equals 23.5 coulombs. So that's my missing charge on my left-hand sphere at the beginning. And you can check this because we know adding these two together should get us a total of 18.6. So you can check 23.5 minus 4.96 and you should get 18.6. Awesome, so we figured out the charges before and after in total and on each item before and after. Our last thing to do is to describe what actually happened here. So initially we had a positive charge on our left sphere and a negative charge on our right sphere. And then going to the end, the left sphere lost positive charge and the right sphere appeared to gain positive charge. However, remember, the only particles that can move are the electrons, the negatively charged ones. Protons are stuck in the nuclei and they cannot move easily. So rather than thinking about positive charge gaining and losing, we're gonna think about negative charge. And the sphere on the left, since it became less positive, it became more negative as it lost charge. So that means we must have had a transfer of electrons from the right-hand sphere to the left-hand sphere. And if we have a look on the right-hand side, we started with a negative 4.96 and we increased up to positive 9.28. So that one has become less negative as it became more positive and therefore it's lost electrons. So that makes sense on both sides. So we can fill in now, what was the flow of charged particles? It was electrons that flowed to the left. The final question is asking what magnitude of charge was transferred from one object to the other? Well, to look at that, we can have a look at the change. So we started out on the left sphere with 23.5. And we ended with 9.28. So the change of the charge on that sphere was 23.5 minus 9.28, which gets us a change of 14.2 coulombs. So the charge on the left decreased by 14.2 coulombs. And if we look at our right sphere, we had negative 4.96 to start with. If we add 14.2 coulombs to that, we end up with 9.28 coulombs. So that's the amount that was transferred between them.